Good evening, brothers and sisters. I hope you are having a blessed Sabbath day. Now we will continue to part four of Revelation chapter 12. Shall we begin? We will begin with the book of Revelation chapter 12 and verses 10 through 12. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Now that the dragon is cast down to earth along with his army of fallen angels, we saw last week how he came to deceive the world, but now we know he is our great accuser, right? Here is an example. Go to the book of Job chapter 1 and we will look at verses 8 through 11. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and skeweth evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Hast not thou made an hedge about him, and about his house, and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. Friends, this was just the beginning. After all was said and done, his friends and his own wife told him to curse God, and Satan failed. And he today continues to accuse God's people to God. He gets one of us to mess up, and then he says to God, See? Look what he just did. He's not your child anymore. He's mine now. Sure, sometimes we mess up, but it's up to us to repent and come back to the Lord. So many of us are like the prodigal son. But when we come back to God, what happens? He welcomes us back with open arms, right? So many times Satan likes to bring up your past and remind you about what you did. But when he reminds you of your past. Remind him of his future. Point to the cross of Calvary and remind him of Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. With the blood of Jesus Christ, we will overcome him. He may use his petty worldly armies here to persecute us and so much that they may kill us. And trust me, brothers and sisters, it's coming and it is coming sooner than we realize. Satan knows that he has just a short time. So the closer we get to the second coming of Jesus Christ, the harder Satan is going to work. We just read that he does this day and night. Go to the book of Matthew chapter 10 and verse 28. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body and hell. Remember the dark ages? For 1,260 years, God's people were persecuted and murdered at the hands of Satan and his army, and it's going to come again. When the image of the beast is formed and the mark is enforced, it's go time, friends. In some countries, Christians are already facing persecution and death in more Islamic countries and communistic countries, but not here in the United States. Not yet. Maybe someone here or there but not like it's going to be. Nowhere near to the extent where we have to flee to the mountains. 
However, when you truly have Christ in the heart, death isn't really such a bad thing. Some of the things that we will face in the near future, we are going to wish we were dead. Remember, we just read that they overcome by the blood of the Lamb and love not their lives unto death. Let's go to the book of Revelation chapter 3 and we will look at verse 21. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my Father in his throne. Let's overcome, brothers and sisters. Let's overcome our sins that we would deal with today. So when the time comes, we can overcome the beast and his image. Even with our lives on the line. In fact, our eternal lives are going to be on the line. Don't have a lapse of faith now. Stand firm on the truth. If you die, at least you went out doing what's right. It's too late in the game to turn back now. Keep pushing forward into the kingdom, the promised land of New Jerusalem, for Jesus is coming very soon. Stay tuned next time for part 5. And this is John Tinsley with Everlasting Rock Ministries. And always remember, the truth never fails. God bless you.